TJ Mack Vintage Cards here, profiling 1980 Tops Baseball set today. Part of my 1980s uh, profile weekend, um, doing 1980 football, uh, hockey, and baseball. And uh, this is really the, the first year I started buying a lot of packs of cards. Still pretty young at the time, but uh, this set brings back a lot of great memories. Um, just to being a kid and putting them in my shoebox and trading them with uh, friends. It was just a... Uh, a uh, great time to be a kid in 1980. And uh, my favorite cards from the year, I really like the Yankees and Pirates cards. Um, Pirates were uh, coming off the World Series win in 1979, and I just loved the yellow uniforms. I wasn't particularly a Pirates fan. I just thought the cards really showed well and, and just loved the set. And it actually is a, um, a set that I do have in a binder, but um, in addition, I got the uh, 30 uh, key cards I determined for that year. And um, and here they're they're all eights or nines um, is what I strive to get mostly eights but if I came across nines at a good price I would buy those as well and again I bought all these uh, many years ago and this set the uh, the main rookie is the Ricky Henderson rookie and we'll get a closer look at it but there it is and just finishing up the scan of the last row so let's take a closer look here at this set. And um, first card we're looking at is the Carlton Fisk. And then just an awesome Gary Carter uh, shot at the plate there. The dust in the air. Kind of like the 76 bench, but just uh, squatted down there with uh, showing that he's got the ball, which I, I really like. Speaking of bench, there he is. And you got Tony Perez in Expos uh, white. No longer with the Reds. Eddie Murray, this is his third year card. Then here we got a Steve Carlton. Um, what I like about this set too is the All Star cards. Uh, they, they're really sharp. Um, the National League ones are the yellow with the black background, and the American League are uh, purple background with the pink, as you'll see later on when we look at a couple of the uh, American League All Stars. But here's uh, Steve Carlton. Uh, that year the Phillies beat the Royals in the World Series four games to two. Carlton won two games and had a 2.40 ERA in the series. Um, he won his uh, third of four Cy Youngs in 1980 with a 24 win, uh, 286 strikeout season. For his career, he won 329 games and struck out 4,136 batters, which is fourth all time. Uh, some of you might know um, before Carlton was a Philly, he was with the Cardinals and he played on the 1967 World Series team. After the 71 season, he was traded um, from the Cardinals to the Phillies for pitcher Rick Wise. It turned out to be a pretty bad trade. Uh, supposedly, there was a contract dispute between the Cardinals owner, Gussie Bush, and Carlton for like $5,000. Wise was an okay player, uh, but he only lasted on the Cardinals until 1973 before getting traded to the Red Sox. Sounds kind of ridiculous today when you think about it over that kind of money. But there you go, Steve Carlton. Here we got uh, Dave Winfield. Um, he signed with the Yankees that year, but here he is with the Padres. Andre Dawson, the Hawk. Now what I mean, uh, he signed in the offseason with the Yankees. He would have been on the Padres in the 1980s season, Winfield, but in the offseason of 80, he signed with the Padres. Or the Yankees, I'm sorry. There's Phil Necro. Robin Yount. Uh, Mike Schmidt. Uh, Schmidt was uh, a great year in 1980 for him. He won his first of three uh, NL MVPs, won the World Series MVP, uh, hit a career-high 48 home runs, was most for a uh, third baseman, and led the National League with 121 RBIs. He's uh, certainly considered uh, one of the greatest third basemen of all time, if not the greatest. Uh, I read something real interesting. I never knew this, that uh, Mike Schmidt was taken in 1971 by the Phillies as a shortstop, and the player taken one pick ahead of him was George Brett, who was also an MVP in 1980 um, with the Royals. So I, I learned something new when I was doing a little research for this video. And then next is uh, one of those guys that is not a Hall of Famer, but is definitely included in my sets um, for some of the years in the early 80s, because I want to have him represented, and that's Dale Murphy, who was just um, you know one of the great players of that time. And um, he definitely deserves a place um, in at least uh, this year's profile. And I, I do have him in some other years as well. Gaylord Perry. And then again, Steve Garvey, not a Hall of Famer, but um, instrumental player of this time, included in my set. 
Dennis Eckersley. And then here is uh, Willie McCovey. Um, 1980 was his last Topps card. And he, um, he did have an 81 flare card, I believe, but this was his last Topps card. McCovey was the 1951 Rookie of the Year, or 1959 Rookie of the Year, I'm sorry, uh, 1969 MVP, six-time All-Star. He was nicknamed Stretch because of his uh, six-foot, four-inch frame, which allowed him to stretch and catch balls hit towards first base. McCovey was called the most feared hitter in baseball by Bob Gibson. And here's how good he was. During his last couple seasons together with uh, McCovey, Willie Mays would stop at first base after hitting a potential double because he didn't want to give his opponents the option of intentionally walking McCovey, who still ended up drawing 258 walks during the 69 and 70 seasons. He finished his career with a 270 batting average, 521 home runs, and he was inducted into the Hall of Fame in the first ballot in 1986. Uh, great player. He just died a couple years ago at the age of 80. There's Ozzie Smith, Paul Molitor, and going down we got um, George Brett who hit 390 that year, as um, pretty much everybody who watches this video I'm sure knows. But what I like is he had 118 um, RBIs in just 117 games. That's a pretty amazing stat in my opinion. And next to him is the Ricky Henderson rookie. Um, just a, a beautiful rookie card. I really like the yellow uh, jersey in this one. And Henderson stole 100 bases in 1980. And then um, next to him is Tom Seaver. And then I'll do a little shout out to um, Shannon with Back to the Cardboard. That's his page, Back to the Cardboard. He's, he's a great guy. Um, he comments in my videos quite a bit. I comment on his as well. Just a really um, outgoing, um, uh, just seems like a really nice person. So he's a big Pete Rose fan, so I just thought I'd call him out here. It's uh, back to the cardboard. And uh, he's a Reds fan, but uh, and here's Rose on the Phillies, but I know he's a big Philly or a big Pete Rose fan. And uh, Rose was one of those instrumental guys um, that got the uh, Phillies over the top. Mike Schmidt said that, that, you know, Rose is just one of those players that his hustle and his just his approach to the game was contagious and uh, and Rose said of Schmidt that Schmidt was a, probably a four day week a player but when when he got there and his influence made him a seven day week player so um, and you could see that Schmidt you know turned next level uh, he was already great but he turned next level when Pete Rose got on those teams and then there's Nolan Ryan all star Jim Palmer. And then going here, we got uh, Reggie Jackson, who uh, hit 300 that year with um, with 41 home runs and 111 RBIs, Mr. October. That's just, I love that card of him as well. I love those. Uh, he's got a beautiful swing. I just like uh, the cards that show that swing. There's uh, Willie Stargell. Joe Morgan. It's funny, he has a microphone in front of him, being he had a later career as a broadcaster. Raleigh Fingers. Uh, beautiful image here, Rod Carew. I love the coloring on this card uh, with the jersey, just sharp. Same with the Yaz card right next to it. These cards just really um, pop when they're together. Just a really nice set. And I just, um, again, went for a, a grade uh, 8 to 9 here. And um, I think they present real well. And uh, just, again, happy to have them in my collection. And thank you for watching uh, today's video of the 1980 Topps baseball set. And everybody have a great day.